You know, it's all too easy to just dismiss Russia's economy as a retreating one, with stagnant GDP and a rapidly aging population. However, if that's really the case, then how is it possible that Putin is so confident in his geopolitical adventures? Ura! After all, he's risking the same Western economic sanctions that have devastated the economy of his ally, Iran. Well, one reason why Putin cares less about these sanctions is that, unlike Iran, the Russian economy is largely self-sufficient where it counts. Massive agricultural sector? Check. Plenty of raw materials? Check. Advanced information technology sector? Check. State-of-the-art defense and aerospace industries? Check. But you know what, this is not even the most important reason why Putin is just not that afraid of Western economic sanctions. Okay, let me present to you the one thing standing between Russia and Western economic sanctions. That's right, the central bank of the world's 11th largest economy has amassed the fifth largest pile of foreign currencies in the world. So how do these central bank owned foreign exchange reserves protect mother Russia? Well, just imagine that the West cuts off both Russian firms and banks from its massive financial markets. No problem, then they just turn to the Russian government for a share of that huge foreign exchange pile. Or now imagine that these sanctions lead to a speculative run on the Russian ruble. Again, no problem, the Russian central bank can just use its vast reserves to buy back rubles on the foreign exchange markets, stopping the fall. But hold on, hold on, you could now credibly argue that Russia also had a significant war chest of foreign exchange reserves when it was hit by Western economic sanctions after annexing Crimea in 2014. Concretely, these sanctions prevented many Western firms from doing business with their Russian counterparts in especially the defense and energy sectors. But more importantly, it meant that Russian banks were suddenly shut off from Western capital markets. As a consequence, the Russian economy was faced with a financial crisis, a run on the ruble, and after that, a massive spike in inflation, up to 16%. Just for comparison, inflation in the USA is 7% today and people are already losing their freaking minds. And in 2014, all of this happened in spite of Russia's impressive war chest of foreign exchange reserves. So what did Russia learn from this experience? First of all, it learned that it needed even more reserves to take away any doubt that Russia wouldn't be able to defend the ruble against speculative attacks. So instead of investing their oil and gas money into the local economy, Russia invested it in foreign exchange reserves instead. Second, Russia's private sector learned to depend less on foreign finance. Did all of this lead to economic hardship for ordinary Russians over these last few years? Sure. But corporate Russia has cut borrowing almost in half compared to 2014. And on top of that, Russia's war chest has expanded by almost 70% since late 2015. Finally, while most countries hold their foreign exchange reserves in dollars, on average 60%, Russia has recognized that such assets can easily be blocked or frozen by the United States. To counter that, it has successfully diversified its war chest. It now only holds 16% of its reserve assets in dollars. For the rest, it holds roughly 32% euro assets, 13% Chinese yuans, 6.5% British pounds, 10% other currencies and almost 22% in gold. But now you could say, doesn't that large share of euro and British pound denominated assets still make Russia vulnerable to the West? Well, not really, since while Russia has reduced its financial exposure to the West, European politicians have once again failed to think strategically. You see, while in 2014 almost 37% of European gas imports came from Russia, that number has now increased to almost 47%. And you know what is strange? Even though Russian gas production has remained roughly the same, gas supplies from Russia to Europe have fallen dramatically as geopolitical tensions increased. And sure, Europeans named Yuri have no issue just turning off the heater and just sitting out this little winter. But the other Europeans, they like their houses warm and cozy. And with energy prices already sky high, Europe is just in no position to risk losing access to that cheap Russian gas. Sure, as is often the case in economics, the long run works differently. I can assure you that right now, European nations are scrambling to get off gas and turn to renewable energy sources. But just to give you an idea of how slow that process might be, 
the Netherlands has set itself the goal to get off gas by 2050. I don't think Putin is shaking in his boots with such a deadline. And even if Europeans are able to somehow speed up that process, China is switching from coal to gas as we speak. Because China is so big, this pushes up gas prices like crazy and will likely ensure the Russian economy will remain insulated from Western sanctions for the foreseeable future. Unless the Chinese economy slows down due to a property downturn. Want to know more about that? Check out this video over here. And if you want to know more about the economies of other countries, check out this playlist over here. And if you appreciated the research needed to produce these types of videos, consider supporting the channel using the Ko-Fi or Patreon links in the description.